This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Conditions are changing rapidly across central Indiana. Right now, we're a state divided. Rain to the south, snow to the north. The national manhunt for a mother on the run with her four children ends in Plainfield. Tonight, what the mother's lawyer is revealing. I never thought anything like this would ever happen. I've been there before. A mother says a local children's play place put her child in danger. We'll show you what happened and how the company is responding. Child care is often hard to find and hard to afford. There is now a big demand for nannies. We speak to a family to find out why hiring a nanny was the best option for them. First at 6, it's a Storm Team 6 alert day. Snow and a wintry mix has arrived in central Indiana, as you can see in this video and, here. And that system that we're talking about here is going to hang around for a while. Let's begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. And Kevin, how long will this winter weather stick around and how much snow? I can't believe we're even talking about snow. Through the morning drive, and I think that may be more difficult than what we're experiencing now because temperatures have worked in our favor so far. This is the RTV6 parking lot and the snow-covered cars you can see. And uh, slushy roadways in the metro area, but it's a little different story in the northern portion of the state. 33 in Indy, that's critical. At the freezing mark in Kokomo, 33 in Muncie. Temperature in Bloomington, 35. That's helped melt on the roadways, but the intensity of the snow can overpower that, and we've seen in Hamilton County, roads becoming slick, especially the side roads, the less traveled roads. We'll take a mix that we've had so far to all accumulating snow for everyone overnight into the morning hours tomorrow. There's your advisory. Amanda asked about how much snow, two to four inches, maybe an isolated amount north of Indy in the metro area, one to two with an isolated higher amount. Kyle? And Kevin, as we go into tomorrow morning, we are still going to have some of those snow showers, so plan ahead and allow some extra travel time there. With snow showers, temperatures are going to be right around the freezing mark for us. Here's a look at TrueCast tomorrow morning at 530. You can see those snow showers and again, more potent snow showers around Lafayette, Kokomo, reducing visibility and adding to those slick spots on the roads. But as we get toward mid to late morning, the precipitation starts to move out. That moves out, but coming up, Kevin will have much more on the frigid temperatures about to move in. Kyle mentioned these slick spots on the roads. We want to show you what the roads look like live from our live drive vehicle on the roads tonight. You're getting a live look at Meridian Street up in the Carmel area there. And as you can see, this is the Carmel Indianapolis line. As you can see that traffic is moving up to speed, but you do want to give yourself some extra time so that when you do approach scenes like this, where you have to break, you have enough room to do that just in case those slick spots are out there. We'll continue monitoring our live drive vehicle, bringing updates throughout this newscast. Amanda. It's all hands on deck for NDOT snow plow drivers. The agency says they have 60 plow trucks on the road in the Indianapolis area. That's a full call out for NDOT. Drivers will be plowing the slush and snow off the road, as well as treating the street as needed. So if you see a yellow dot truck, slow down and give the driver plenty of room. dot trucks typically treat interstates, highways, and state roads. And the Indianapolis Department of Public Works has 80 snow force trucks out working on the roads around the Circle City right now. DPW says you need to be careful on all roads, but especially bridges and overpasses, passes, which tend to freeze up first. Indy DPW snow force trucks treat city streets. We have complete Storm Team 6 weather coverage on our website at theindychannel.com. Our team of meteorologists show you what to expect for the rest of the evening tomorrow and how long the snow and wintry mix will stick around. A Virginia mother and her four children on the run for six months caught by U.S. Marshals in Hendricks County. A tip led Marshals straight to Melody Bannister. The search began in August and ended in the middle of the night at a Speedway gas station in Plainfield. RTV6's Troy Washington is working to get to the bottom of the mother's reason for risking it all. She spoke to this woman's lawyer tonight. Melody Bannister traded stability for living a life on the run when she decided to take her four children on summer vacation and never return. Bannister's wild ride landed her here in jail. She's declined our request for an interview right now, but she makes it clear online that she felt she was protecting her children. So what would make a mother risk her freedom? Melody Bannister began to live as a fugitive, as, a, as an American outlaw, trying to protect her children from a human trafficking ring. Before resorting to living a life on the run, investigators say the mother told Stafford County, Virginia deputies her children were being abused by relatives. After police and child protective services determined the allegations to be unfounded and custody was given to their father, she disappeared. 
Samuel McClure is the attorney now working with Bannister. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with sophisticated, powerful people in the community that these allegations are against. She did everything she could. I mean, Troy, what would you do? He says he caught up with her while she was hiding out in Alabama, accused of abduction by a parent and kidnapping of a minor. I think she did what any rational mother would do, and that's try to protect her children at all costs. McClure showed RTV6 a psychiatric evaluation done by an expert explaining the mother is of sound mind and reasonable judgment. It's a travesty right now that the, the justice system is failing these children. We reached out to a phone number that was listed for the children's father to get his response to the accusations of abuse. We are still waiting to hear back. McClure says he hopes such desperate measures will get investigators in Virginia to take a second look at the mother's concerns. Working for you in Hendricks County, Troy Washington, RTV6. And Bannister is currently waiting to be taken back to Virginia. A silver alert issued for a missing 37-year-old mother and her three-year-old child, both last seen Monday morning in Greenfield. The Cumberland Metropolitan Police Department is searching for Mary Borowski and her son Aaron Carl Borowski. According to the silver alert, Mary and Aaron are believed to be in extreme danger and may require medical assistance. Mary is believed to be driving a dark blue 2003 GMC Yukon with Indiana license plate FI7106. If you've seen Mary or Aaron Borowski, call 911. I was frantic. I knew she was in danger. Um, I was absolutely sick to my stomach. A local mother is looking for answers tonight after she says employee negligence could have caused serious injuries to her daughters at a popular children's place. Now, RTV6's Megan Sanctorum is working for you to find out what happened and how the company is responding. What started as a fun night at the jump and play in Noblesville ended with what this mom calls a terrifying situation. I was frantic. Um, I was absolutely sick to my stomach. Mindy Black says she was there with her kids on Saturday night and they stayed right until closing time. But that's when she realized one of her three-year-old twin daughters was missing. I did hear her screaming and crying for and, and yelling, Mommy. Black says at this point, an employee had already started deflating the bounce areas. And she says her daughter was trapped inside one. It's very heavy vinyl. Her head and right arm was completely covered. They were able to pull her daughter out before she was injured. But she says she's haunted by what could have happened. I was sick. I was sick to my stomach um, for a minute there. I thought, my God, like what if I hadn't got to her in time? Black says she's been here before and she's never had any issues until this employee deflated the bounce areas without checking for kids first. There has to be safety measures put into order. Um, I don't know if there are safety measures and the employee just chose not to follow them or um, there needs to be a plan in place to you know, not cause harm to someone's child. She says she realizes this is something that could have happened anywhere. So she's sharing her story to remind parents to always be alert. We expect the you know facility to, to do those types of safety measures, but we can't always we can't always know that that's going to happen. She says her calls and messages to the business owner have gone unreturned. My child was lucky. Um, the next one may not be so lucky. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. A manager at the jump and play today declined to comment. He told us his attorney would reach out to us. We have yet to hear back, but RTV6 does not give up without a resolution or at least an answer. We will keep on this case and let you know what we learn. If you have any safety concerns involving you or your children and you are not getting answers, let us know. Email us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. A Tri-West High School teacher and coach charged with child seduction will keep his job, at least for now. Dozens of people showed up to last night's board meeting in Northwest Hendricks School. Many express concerns that teacher Tyler Bruce has not been fired yet. Call 6 Investigates raised questions this summer about an alleged inappropriate relationship between Bruce and a student. Bruce is now charged with child seduction. He was on paid leave for months and is now on unpaid suspension, but many feel the board had enough information to terminate him months ago. I don't believe our board members are putting students first. Our board members are putting their own interests and putting their friends and family before the safety um, of our students. So it's a huge problem. We're talking about an individual that still has rights that has not 
been convicted and legally we have to consider his rights as well. So it's, it's a difficult situation. Members of the community are asking the board to step down. However, that's not happening. Tyler Bruce denies the allegations and is fighting the board's effort to terminate him. He requested a meeting with the superintendent. New information tonight about a police-involved shooting in Lawrence that injured a man yesterday afternoon. This stops the RTV6 news feed. The Lawrence Police Department says the man who was shot by an officer is now in serious but stable condition, which is an improvement. The Lawrence officer shot a man around 2.30 yesterday afternoon on East 56th Street at the I-465 interchange after a chase. Investigators say there was some type of confrontation that led to the shooting. Police say they were chasing two suspects because of a shoplifting incident earlier, earlier on Pendleton Pike. Assistant Police Chief Gary Woodruff says that officers were not shot at by the suspects and he was not sure if either was armed. An investigation into the police-involved shooting continues. Investigators arrest two Seymour police officers on charges of official misconduct, ghost employment, and theft. Indiana State Police say former Seymour Police Chief William Abbott and current Captain Carl Lamb are both charged in this case. After a four-month investigation, state police say Abbott worked to provide security for a medical center while he was working in his official capacity with the Seymour Police Department. Investigators say Lamb worked outside security while also on duty in his official capacity with the police department. Both Abbott and Lamb are on administrative leave during the investigation. Nannies are in high demand because child care can be expensive and hard to find. Tonight we'll show you why one local family says hiring a nanny was the best option so they could keep working. What you can learn. <laughs> and I'm Dave First, live tonight, Baker's Life Fieldhouse best team in the NBA, record-wise. Milwaukee Bucks in town. ESPN's here tonight. Look on your far side. It's Stephen A. Smith. Everybody knows Stephen A. Makes about $7 million or so a year. Needs a teleprompter to be on live television. What's up with that, man? Come on! <laughs> We're live with more coming up. Uh-oh. Hopefully Dave doesn't tweet anything about that. It could start a, start a tweet war. All right, the colors are colorful on our radar. The blue represents snow. There's the rain. So some of you have accumulating snow. The southern half of the state, it's all rain and fairly heavy. We'll sort it all out coming up. $2.59 per month. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Let's check back in with our live drive vehicle on the roads on this Storm Team 6 alert day, letting you uh, see firsthand what to expect if you're heading out on the roadways. Our live drive vehicle on US 31 in Westfield. And as you can see, there's a little bit of slush on the road there, and you do need your windshield wipers if you're out on the road. Of course, give yourself some extra time and distance just in case you run into some slick spots. We're hearing that the more north you go, the uh, worse conditions could be. That deteriorates the further north you're driving. We'll continue checking in with our live drive drive vehicle here on RTV6 News at 6. Hiring Hoosiers is RTV6's initiative, connecting you to job opportunities, education, and resources. Child care is a problem for a lot of families. Yeah, it can be expensive and sometimes hard to find. So a lot of people are now turning to nannies. And if you're looking for a job, there is a great demand for more nannies because of this. Today, RTV6's Meredith Barrett continues our series on nannying. She sits down with a local mom who says hiring a nanny was the only thing that made sense in order for both parents to continue working, a challenge that many families face. My husband and I are both in the medical field and our hours are not so traditional. Caroline Slaybaugh says the ages of her kids, 10 and 1, didn't help their situation either. They often felt as though they had to be in two places at two different times. We knew a nanny was really our only option in terms of being able to deal with our schedule and having that flexibility. After searching on their own, only to be met with disappointment and stress, they turned to Indie Nanny Concierge to find the right nanny to fit their unconventional schedules and both children's needs. We saved us time and it made us feel really good knowing that these people who are being presented to us were going to fit our needs and wants along with our flexible timing. Michaela Minnick ended up being the perfect match. I leave every morning knowing that the kids are well taken care of. They will have academic input and moments of learning all integrated with fun and love. 
every single day. <laughs> Slayball wants other working families to feel that way too, even if traditional daycare oh, good job. has always Put been their go-to. I think there are a that lot of people it. out there who need that flexibility. And even if you do work a standard, you know, nine to five, there are a lot of people who need to go run errands or do other things beyond those hours where you do need that flexibility. Working for you, Meredith Barrick, RTV6. Well, if you think your family could benefit from hiring a nanny, you can contact Indy Nanny Concierge. Staring at two things tonight, actually just looking out the window, see how it's changing, and it is changing quickly, northern half of the state, but also looking at the thermometer and radar. 33 in Indy, Greencastle, Terre Haute, 35. Notice as you go up 31, you get north of, from Hamilton County, north temperatures just below the freezing mark. That will allow quickly changing road conditions also, watch for visibility to drop in fog and snow. That's a northern half of the state problem. To the south, it's all about rain and steady rain and moderate rainfall. Metro area, we have light snow at RTV6, southern Marion County rain, maybe a little sleet mixing in, and then you go south of that, it becomes all rain. Likely to stay all rain until overnight. Likely to stay all snow in the northern third of the state. That mix may continue to drift to the north, and that's one of the keys to the forecast as far as our snowfall amounts where that rain snow line finally ends up. Wanted to show you the snow chances after midnight. They come back and this should be instead of a wintry mix or rain and snow, just snow that will set up a slippery commute in the morning. 9 p.m. There's your rain snow line just to the north of Indy. We take that to 11 snow Terre Haute to Kokomo Northwest and then overnight you'll see the snow expand into the morning hours tomorrow and that's where we see more of the accumulation. Here's your snowfall potential two to four inches just north of Indy with isolated higher amounts one to two inches along the I-70 corridor against some isolated higher amounts and then rain to the south. That gets us to tomorrow morning. Here's Kyle. And Kevin, with that wintry mess, we could have some closings or delays in parts of central Indiana. So tomorrow morning, make sure to check the IndyChannel.com. Right now, you'll find dozens of church cancellations for this evening. Here's a look at TrueCast. 8 o'clock in the morning, still some snow showers. But by the time we get to mid to late morning, most of the precipitation is out of here. May see a few isolated snow showers into the afternoon. But really, our attention is going to turn toward those falling temperatures. And it's going to be breezy, too. By middle of the day, we've got a temperature of 36 in Indy already wind chills in the teens in Lafayette. And as we go to tomorrow afternoon, those temperatures continuing to fall. 19 will be the wind chill in the Circle City, and it's even colder for our Friday. Kevin has more. A cold-hearted Valentine's Day. Five degrees, that's what we wake up to on Friday morning, a high only in the teens. Here's what I can say about that. It won't last long. The transition to warmer temperatures will arrive quickly. We're in the 30s Saturday, 40s Sunday, and close to 50 by now. Next Tuesday, warm enough for some rain once again. Let's check back in with Dave. Things picking up here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Remember, it's a 7.30 tip tonight here as they take on the Milwaukee Bucks. Team with the best record right now in the NBA. Certainly heading into the All-Star break. A 46-7 record. While the Pacers have all of a sudden lost six in a row and five in a row here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. To show you, get out of the way here. To show you, Victor Oladipo, who once again will start tonight against the Bucks. This is a game he's been looking forward to. Although the star power isn't quite what it once was because... Uh, Adetokounmpo uh, will not start. It will not play tonight for the Bucks, so he is out. Giannis Adetokounmpo, but Vic is back tonight. We'll see what they have in store. Got to get a dub heading into the, into the All-Star break this weekend. Brad Brown has more in tonight's Sports Extra Spotlight. Here's Brad The Pacers lose. A mid-season slump. A bump in the road. There are plenty of ways to describe the last couple of weeks for the Pacers, but inside the locker room, the team continues to keep its focus. We're coming together. I think uh, I think we got a really good group. Um, we're going to get closer um, because of this. You know, we're not going to fold. We're not going to go separate ways. It's going to bring us closer um, collectively. Six straight losses overall. It's been three years since that last happened. A variety of reasons, from bad starts to bad finishes. Then there's the obvious adjustment of adding Victor Oladipo back to the rotation. It's growing pains in seasons. Um, 
Uh, my last two years here, we've been in situations where we've been on losing streaks too, so maybe not as long, but we have been, but we figured it out back then, and we'll figure it out now. Even more troubling is five consecutive home losses. You have to go back 12 years for the last stretch like that. We just want to go out there and obviously win, but most important is have that good have, have that good sensation, that feeling, you know, that we had today and uh, keep working together, you know. Uh, we can't do nothing, just go out there and compete, you know, because we, we have the break and we we got a tough stretch coming up uh, to finish the season and uh, most importantly, we got to stick together. The All-Star break will be a welcome few days off, a chance to reset and regroup for the home stretch, making a run at home court for the playoffs first round. We have a lot of great guys, great character guys that aren't going to allow this, you know, to keep happening. You can't separate the star pointing fingers. Uh, I think the thing, you know, as I've told them, uh, first look at yourself and what you can do to uh, help the situation and improve the situation. Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. Well, I'll tell you what, this team has had some late game collapses, losing six times, really six different ways. They're up six with six and a half to play against the Nets the other night, up four against the Pelicans. It was a game against the Raptors a couple of days ago, but then at Toronto a week ago, they were up 11 with three and a half to play and blew that game. We'll see what happens tonight. Big game as they take on the East leading Milwaukee Bucks. Hey, finally tonight, first and foremost, from Circuit of the Americas down in Austin, Texas, worth the wait if you're an IndyCar fan, the conditions this afternoon finally worth going out. A total of 27 drivers. Temperatures around 55 degrees down there. Just check timing and scoring. Will Power leading the way. Fastest so far. Followed by Colton Herna, Alexander Rossi, Joseph Newgarden, and Pato Award. 7.30 tip. You can see tonight's game live over on our friends at ESPN. Maybe Stephen A. will have a teleprompter for him. That'll do it for now. Day first live. We'll see you tonight on the news at 11 o'clock. Ed Martin Toyota. The only name you need to know. You're looking at conditions on Spring Mill Road up in Hamilton County, Westfield area, deteriorating.